Okay, welcome everyone. This flip classroom video is going to focus on how to name acids and bases. So some good news for naming bases, you already know how to name them. So they just follow traditional ionic compound naming rules. So it's the metal name plus hydroxide. So some examples of bases that you might need to name, NaOH, sodium is Na, hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. So remember calcium is plus two, hydroxide's minus one. So when you do your crisscross, that's why you end up with that extra subscript of two. And then barium hydroxide, BaOH2. And remember we add parentheses around polyatomic ions if we have more than one of that polyatomic ion. So otherwise, that's all stuff we've named before. Look back in your ionic compound naming um, notes if you need a refresher. Now the one exception to this, one very common base we're gonna work with a lot that doesn't follow this naming rule is ammonia, okay? So ammonia NH3 is also a base. There's no real tricks to this one. You just gotta memorize it and know that whenever you see it, it's going to be a base, even though it doesn't have that OH with it. So let's actually go ahead and focus on acids for the rest of the video. So when it comes to naming acids, the name of an acid is based upon the name of the negative ion in that acid, okay? So there's three steps we're gonna follow when we are actually naming an acid. The first thing, we're gonna split the acid into its ions. So it's cations, which are almost always, I think, I don't really think of any exceptions, are going to be hydrogen ions. And then it's anions, which is gonna be either a monatomic or polyatomic ion. And then based upon the ending of the anion, we're gonna choose the correct naming rule. We'll talk about those in a second. And then we take the stem of the anion name. So if we have fluorine, the stem of that name is the fluor. If we have um, chlorine, it'd be chlor. So we take the stem of the anion name and put that into the naming rule, okay? So let's look at the three different naming rules we have, okay? So the first one is for anions ending in ide. The naming rule we use is hydro, the blank spot where we put the stem in, ic acid. And there's actually some really helpful mnemonic devices. I personally use these still all the time just to help keep the rules straight in my own mind. So for anions ending in ide, the mnemonic is my ride has hydraulics. And I know it's misspelled hydraulics. It's okay, just kind of play along a little bit. So an example of this would be chloride, okay? And it's an IDE, so it'd be hydrochloric acid, which is something we've worked with a lot this year already. So the next one is for anions ending in eight, okay? So like sulfate. So the naming rule for these is we take the stem, we add an ick, and then acid, okay? So the mnemonic for this is I ate something icky, okay? So if we had sulfate, it'd be sulfuric acid. Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out when it comes to naming acids, you do still need to put the word acid with it. If you just give the first name, it really doesn't make sense. That's not something we do. Versus bases, we have like the sodium hydroxide, but we don't call it sodium hydroxide base. We just call it sodium hydroxide. Versus we don't just call it hydrochloric. It's hydrochloric acid. Okay. So just one little thing to keep in mind. And then the final anion naming rule for things ending in ite. So like nitrite. For these, we take the stem. So for nitrite, it'd be nitre. And then we add O-U-S, so nitrous acid. And the mnemonic for this one is Sprite is delicious. Okay, that O-U-S. So let's go ahead and try some examples with these. Okay, so this first one, HClO4. Okay, so let's go ahead and split it into its ions. The first one we're going to have hydrogen and then ClO4 minus one, which if you think back a little ways, that is going to be the perchlorate ion. And I will post a list of all the polyatomic ions online for you guys to review. So perchlorate. So if I think about this, eight, I ate something icky. So I'm going to take this stem, which is going to be that perchlor, and then add the ick to it. Okay. So that's going to be the ic acid rule. So I'm going to take my perchlor and then add ic acid. So I end up all together with perchloric acid. Okay, let's try another one. HF, okay, so hydrogen 
fluoride. Okay, so we go ahead and stick these two together. We have hydrogen and fluoride. Okay, so the ide, my ride, has hydraulics. Okay, so this is going to be the hydroic acid example. And then we take that stem, which is going to be my fluor. So this is going to be hydrofluoric acid. Okay, probably sounds familiar. H3PO4. So again, we're going to split this one up into its ions. Remember, hydrogen is always plus one. So in this case, we have three hydrogen cat ions. That's how it all will end up balancing out. And one PO4, so one phosphate. Okay, so phosphate ends in H, so I ate something icky. So this is going to be my something ick acid. So in this case, it's going to be my phos and then ick acid. But if we think about that, phosphic acid sounds kind of weird. Same thing with sulfate. Okay, sulfic acid doesn't sound quite right. So for phosphorus and for sulfur, we add an extra OR or UR to kind of just help that roll off better. So phosphoric acid probably sounds a lot more familiar. That's actually was oftentimes added to soda, so to pop, to give it kind of that bright, slightly acidic taste to it, to make it taste fresh. Okay, so the final example we have here for naming, H3PO3. So this one, again, we split it up into its ions. So PO3, negative 3, that's not phosphate anymore. It's going to be phosphite. So this is Sprite is delicious, okay? So we're going to have the us acid. And again, we add that OR to make it just sound a little more better, okay? It just flows a little better. So this one is going to end up being phosphorus acid, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about doing the reverse, going from the name to the formula. So the first thing we need to do is figure out which rule is being used. Is it I ate something icky? Sprite is delicious or my ride has hydraulics. Once we know which rule is being used, we're going to then determine the anion. Okay, once we know the anion, pretty much every single case, like I said, is going to match up with a hydrogen ion or however many hydrogen ions you need to get a neutral um, compound. So we're going to write the chemical formula after we do that. So let's do some examples here. So we have nitric acid. Okay, well, if we think about this, Ick acid. Okay, well, I ate something icky, right? So nitric acid, I ate something icky. So we're going to take the stem from that. So the nit with the R. Okay, so the nitric. Okay, so we have the nit plus eight, so nitrate. Now, if we go ahead and write out those two ions, we're going to have hydrogen with our nitrate, and then we're going to crisscross. So we have a positive one and a negative one. In this case, we don't add any extra subscripts. So we get our formula for nitric acid being HNO3, okay? So let's try another one. Acetic acid. Okay, well, this one, again, is ick acid, so I ate something icky. So this is going to be the stem, A-C-E-T, plus eight, so acetate. Okay, now remember, acetate's one of those really weird ions. There's a couple different ways we can write it. All of them are valid. Okay, so if we write our hydrogen ion plus acetate, this is just one of the many ways you can write them. Again, look on your list of polyatomic ions for the other possibilities. And you will, unfortunately, see this written different ways depending upon who wrote it. Now, one thing I want to point out. Usually, when we are writing acid formulas, we put the hydrogen first. Acetic acid is just kind of one of those weird examples where we oftentimes actually write the hydrogen at the end. So CH3COOH is one of the most common ways you'll see acetic acid written. The reason for this comes down to something called organic chemistry, which we're not going to touch on this year, but if you go on to future science classes, you're going to spend a lot of time thinking about organic chemistry. Well, the COOH is actually something very special in organic chemistry called a carboxylic acid. So by writing it that way, it lets us know more about the structure, how the atoms are connected. But if you're not talking to an organic chemist, just an inorganic chemist, one who doesn't care so much about how things are bonded together, they focus on other things, C2H4O2 is also perfectly valid, and to them is how they see it more frequently. Okay, the next one, hydrobromic acid, well, hydroic Okay, so my ride has hydraulics, okay? 
So if I think about that, I have my stem, which is my brome mixed in, plus I. So bromine, okay? So I have hydrogen plus bromine. They crisscross. I get HBr, okay? And then one final example, sulfurous acid. Okay, so us, Sprite is delicious, okay? Our stem here is at sulfur. Now, keep in mind, we're adding that extra U-R, so it just kind of flows off the tongue nicer. So really, it's just the S-U-L-F is the stem, okay? So if we think about this sulfite, it's not sulfurite, okay? So think about what you're most familiar. If it sounds wrong in your gut, you might have an extra syllable in there. Okay, so for our ions, we have hydrogen plus sulfite, SO3, negative 2. Now remember, if we crisscross those, the 2 from the sulfite is going to come down to the hydrogen because we need two of those for charge balance. So our formula ends up becoming H2SO3. So I hope this helps answer any questions you have about naming or writing formulas for acids and bases. Um, as always, please feel free to reach out to me via email, remind, or check in during office hours. Have a great day, everyone, and thanks for watching.